Connecting an S7-1500 to an SQL database. The following web link will take you to the application example available for connecting an S7-1200 and an S7-1500 to an SQL database. By going to the Siemens Industry Online Support website, you'll be able to quickly access application examples. From there you can search for SQL and a 1500. Just show you the other examples available as well. into the S7-1500 SQL to a database. Here you're going to find the documentation and the available project. So the agenda for this topic is going to be the introduction, engineering, integration, and operation. The tabular data stream protocol gives you the ability to establish a direct connection with a Microsoft SQL server. Using TDS, you can log into an SQL Server database and transmit SQL instructions. In this way, it is possible to read data from the database or send them to the database for storage. This application example demonstrates how Somatic S7-1500 establishes a connection to a Microsoft SQL Server via TDS and sends data to the database using open user communication blocks. TCON, TSEND, TRECEIVE, and TDisconnect these blocks are available inside of TIA Portal. The principal operation of the LSQL Microsoft function block is the execution of the SQL doesn't occur until the connection is verified. Here in the beginning of the loop you will see this taken care of as either checking for errors or becoming fully established. Once the block is fully established, the main loop resides between the formulate SQL instruction and the transmit SQL instruction. Here is where you will find the main cycle. Forcing or erroring will cause a disconnect and connection termination. Here one thing to note for this application example as you see it are the components used in the simulation environments that I'm controlling. Simulation systems support the development of programs and deployment in production that follows. In the automation world, a simulated test environment shortens the commissioning times. It is possible to test the program after program changes in the virtual controller before it is loaded into the corresponding real controller and the plant is put into operation. What I'd like for you to notice is the communication options available when you're using PLC Sim Advanced. So the table below shows the different available options in terms of PLC Sim Advanced versus PLC Sim. The new Siemens.com website has software and TIA portal options listed. Here, take special attention to automation, simulation, and function tests. Here with S7 PLC Sim Advanced, this is what we're going to be using today in our demonstration. The function block LSQL Microsoft emulates the TDS protocol on the basis of open user communication blocks. It facilitates the following actions. Logging in to a Microsoft SQL Server database. Here you're going to find the tags enable, con settings, login information. These pertain to the logging in of the Microsoft SQL database. Transmitting SQL instructions. The associated tags here are SQL command, execute SQL command. Archiving receive data. Here the related tags are enable archive, db, and dbmax. Internally the block works with helper blocks, so they are not explained here in more details. You'll have to investigate that yourself. Here's an example of the overall block interface. The following figure shows the interfaces of the function block LSQL Microsoft and the associated data types. The associated data types are broken up into two tables on the right. Here you'll find ins and outs. Namely you want to identify the things that are required. Here you'll want to start by noting the enable. This enables the overall functionality of the function block. Also you'll want to go then through the connection settings where you'll identify the IP address of the server and also the port connections. From there we're going to go into the login information. Here you'll want to collect this information from your IT department or have it already collected from the build that you did for the MSQL server. From there you'll be able to execute the SQL command that you build and this is going to be the string that you're going to pass. Ideally on the output here you're going to have indication of being busy, erroring, status, some more sub-functioning on diagnostics, and then last but not least, indication of the command completing. A little bit of a deeper dive into the block interface for the LSQL type login information. Here you will find these 
in the user data types. This user data type is used to connect the login information to the LSQL Microsoft function block. Please note the mandatory versus the optional requirements. These settings will come from the SQL Microsoft server that you are connecting to. These settings should be defined depending on the SQL Microsoft server that you are connecting to. There are some requirements, however. The following requirements apply to the use of the application example. These are all assumptions that have already been proven. The S7-1500 firmware must be version 2.5 or later. Microsoft SQL Server is fully configured. S7-1500 and Microsoft F SQL Server are in the same subnet. Here, please follow the note if you are intending to use the S7-1200 with the following library. Under the following conditions, this module is also functional with the S7-1200 from firmware v4.4 or higher. v4.4 firmware is only available in TIA Portal v16. Do not use the archive functionality. Here you must comment out the program line 386 of the LSQL Microsoft block. To do this, open the block and click edit type. Now find the program line 386 with the write to DB array instruction and comment it out. If you intend on using this block with an S7-1200, use the double forward slash to comment out line 386 for the write to array DB instruction. This only pertains to the S7-1200 family and not the S7-1500 family. Here are some more following restrictions that apply to this application example. The application example only works with the tested hardware and software versions. Using open user communication with an S7-1500, a maximum of 65,536 bytes per command can be sent or received. The block LSQL Microsoft may be called no more than once per Microsoft SQL Server. So to begin, open the reference project with your currently new project, NTI Portal v16. Drag and drop the reference project, both program blocks and PLC data types into the according folder. Enter connecting the block parameters. Call the block LSQL Microsoft in a cyclic block, for example, main OB1, and interconnect the inputs and outputs as seen in the following figure. Note, the wiring of the parameters described here is an essential requirement for the operation of the block. In the application example, data are transmitted from the controller to the storage of the SQL server. It is not necessary to use the archive to do this. The connection settings and login information must be cleared on the SQL server side in order to establish the connection. Further information on the topic can be found in this chapter, Settings in the Microsoft SQL Server Express, found in the application example provided at the beginning slide. Interconnecting the block parameters. The block LSQL Microsoft is controlled via the inputs enable and execute SQL command. The enable input controls the process of establishing and terminating a connection to the SQL server. The enable must have the value true as long as the SQL instruction must be transmitted to the SQL server. If enable is set to false, then the connection to the SQL server is terminated. In order to successfully establish a connection, the following parameters must be set in the data block, SQL config. The unfilled parameters are optional, See complete list in the next slides. Here are a few additional requirements. In the parameter section, IP address and the port of the SQL server. The default port for Microsoft SQL Server is 1433. Another parameter requirement, SQL Server login information. Again, visit this section as you can see the settings in the Microsoft SQL Server Express. Name of the SQL server. In the application example here, you will see SQL Express, indicated also farther down in our structure here on the right for server name. And last, the name of the database of the SQL server. An SQL server can contain multiple databases, so you need to use this parameter to specify which database you wish to connect to. For this application example, we're going to be using PLC Sim Advanced version 3.0 for TIA Portal v16. Simulating a PLC by changing the properties of the project is required. To do this, right click on the top level of the project in the project tree and go to the properties. Enable the support simulation during block compilation feature. Without, a download to PLC Sim Advanced is not allowed. Here I've already created a video which features how to connect an S7-1500 to an SQL database, although this is the virtual edition. So what you will see is a PLC being created using PLC Sim Advanced version 3.0 with TIA Portal v16 and also a VMware running Microsoft SQL Server. 